you know, they, there's, a, there's a saying from the Bible. It says, many are called, but few are chosen. Right. And what that means is that many people hear of these opportunities to learn and grow and become successful, but only a few take advantage of it. Yes. 80% don't. 80% of people basically struggle for minimum wage. They're the kind of people who march for $15 an hour to work at McDonald's. Uh, I was thinking about these McDonald's workers protesting, and they're demanding $15 an hour. And you look at these people, and they're intelligent. They've gone to 12 years of school in most cases. They um, obviously got all kinds of talents and abilities and so on. And here they've been working for 20 years, and you can see how old they are on the television. And at 20 years, they're still earning minimum wage. After 20 years of work, how could that happen? How could you go through 20 years of work and not increase your skills? So if you lost your minimum wage job, the only kind of job you could do is another minimum wage job. Whereas people like you and I and the people who come to this seminar are people who are hungry for knowledge. They want to learn. They want to grow. They want their income to go up and up and up. You know, I read a, a, a discussion about business many years ago that had a great effect. It said that if you own a business, you should be planning to increase your income your, your, from your business by 25 to 50% a year. Because if you don't have that as a goal, you'll never achieve it. It's not that you're guaranteed to achieve it, but you have to have it as a goal to earn 25 to 50% more each year. Well, as an individual, uh, Earl Nightingale once said, the biggest mistake you can ever make is to ever think you work for anyone else but yourself. Right. Everyone is self-employed. They say, if you're not happy with your income, go to the nearest mirror and negotiate with your boss. <laughs> uh, because, because you determine how much you're going to earn. And that is a shock to people. When I, when I learned that in my early 20s, I thought that you went out and you got a job and the big boss told you how much you were going to get and put you to work and you lined up for your paycheck and, and looked at all the deductions. And, and, and there were enormous deductions. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was getting the gross amount that I'd been hired for. And then they took all these deductions off. And, uh, and then when I learned that everyone works for themselves, if you're unhappy with your income, increase the value of your contribution. Yes. Increase the value of your contribution. And uh, this wonderful, wonderful line that also had an influence on me, it says you, you earn not what you want, but what you deserve. Yes. And the word deserve comes from the Latin. And it comes, means from the service, servus. The servus means you earn what you earn from service to other people. So if you want to increase your income, increase the value of your service to other people. Constantly look for ways to serve your boss, to serve your company, to serve your com customers more and better than anyone else. And people will always gravitate to buying and using the products and services of people who attempt to serve them more. And every company that is successful today, richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, do you know the value of Amazon went up 40% this year? Can you imagine that? 40% wow. wow. increase in value of, uh, of Apple went up 32%. In other words, I have, I have a good friend who, uh, so good guys, an executive in, in, in a nice company, and he took all his money and he put it all in, uh, into Apple when they brought out the iPhone. He said, he's, got, he's so rich today, he never has to work again for the rest of his life. And he's just a working guy. I mean, he's a manager and good guy and a little bit overweight. He said, but he just put it all in. He don't go like all, like, like, like hold, no hold and poker or push it all in and became wealthy. And, um, and so Jeff Bezos, he had this basic idea is what do people want? Is they like to read and um, they want to buy books, uh, but uh, they don't have time to go to bookstores anymore. I went to every bookstore I could. I, I was, to me, it was the high point of, of a weekend or traveling or, or walking to see a bookstore and just go and just walk around the bookstore. But then you got busier and busier and you couldn't go to the bookstore. And so he saw this, people want books. And then if you did go, they were often out of the book that you wanted. So you had to place an order and you had to pay for it. And then you had to come back in a week to get the book and so on. 
So he had this idea that you could order a book and it would be delivered directly to your home in within a week and uh, he'd give you a discount of 20 to 30 percent. And since most people didn't read the book right away, they started to order books uh, online. He became the richest man in the history of the world by serving people at a higher level. Today, a a a Amazon offers 30 million products from thousands, tens of thousands of companies all over the world that are good quality, unconditionally guaranteed, low price and delivered to your home in one or two days. Unbelievable, just serving other people. Yes. And every company that is successful is a company that's found a way to serve people. I say better, faster, cheaper, easier. And anybody who wants to be successful, all they have to do is look around them or look into their own life and find a way to serve people better and better than your competition. And you can, you can earn a fortune. But most people perceive that they are their job. They perceive that they are a dentist or a pilot or a ditch digger or an Uber driver. They are that and they've got the blinkers on that that's all they do and can do. And so ideas can't come into their mind because they perceive that they're a butcher or a chemist or that they, right. that's all they are. And so they, they actually stop ideas from coming in. And if ideas happen to come in, they, they throw them away because no, I'm, I'm right. a nurse. I just do nursing. And, and so I keep my eyes open. You keep your eyes open. Heck, what I'm doing today is no, nowhere near what I did five years ago, nowhere near what I did 10 years ago. I told you already, I graduated as a mathematician and physicist, and now I'm teaching spiritual principles of success. Like, hello, how did that happen? Yes. Well, you know, the, the most successful people today, uh, Peter Drucker said this many years ago, that readers are leaders. And I taught this to my children. My children are all readers. They read all the time uh, because reading is what makes you a leader in, in financial terms. So the best professionals that I know, and I meet them every day, are constantly reading to upgrade their skills. Uh, the best medical professionals in every field are constantly taking uh, additional courses and, and seminars and going to continuing uh, education units and so on. Uh, but the great majority of people, they finish their schooling and they never learn again. They never learn again. That's and so I am bringing you for all of Americans to Los Angeles and for all Canadians to Toronto and for people around the world, they can choose whichever is closer, Toronto, or Los Angeles, and you can be in a room with me, but also with this wise master, this Jedi master who preceded me on stage and whom I learned from when I was just a little boy, uh, a boy speaker, and he was already world famous. It's April four and five in Los Angeles, 2020. Right. And May one, two, three in Toronto in 2020. And there's two levels of tickets. Let me just explain. There's general admission where you come and enjoy all the days and learn like crazy, network. And then there's the VIP, which I strongly recommend because they always sell out first and we can only have a limited number of them. At VIP level, you get a special registration desk so you don't have to wait. You get a special name tag so people can see that you're special. You're first admitted to the room so you can sit where you want. There's VIP sitting right near the front so you get the immediacy of being really close to Brian and myself and the other speakers. But on top of that, you get an individual photograph with Brian Tracy. I don't mean a group photo. I mean you and Brian Tracy and then the next person and Brian Tracy. But you get your own picture with Brian Tracy and lunch every day. It's an amazing deal. Click on the link and you will be able to choose either Los Angeles or Toronto, and then you'll choose either VIP or general admission, whatever your pocketbook can handle, and be there and come up and hug me and just be grateful and be happy. Because the, as Brian says, you can't, there's no other way to learn but being in a room with a master who has proven his worth over decades that his words work, his learning works, his teaching works, his lessons work, his books sell because they work. 
and I am so overjoyed that I am finally, after all these years, correcting a mistake that I brought so many other experts to my stage and not Brian Tracy, my old buddy. From <laughs> that's, uh, that's very flattering. That's very flattering, Raymond. Thank you. Because I think of you at the, the, the same level. Uh, I've learned so much from you over the years.